Shown here are different types of convolutions. Convolutions are the integral of the pointwise multiplication of two functions as a function of the amount that one of the original functions is translated. If you perform a convolution of a function on itself, that is called autocorrelation. In a pulse beam autocorrelator, the two functions are pulses from the same laser, which we assume to be equivalent. Luckily for us, we can set up a Michelson interferometer to co-align the two beams. And now we'll have John walk you through the setup in the heat of the lab. So for our final lab, we wanted to perform an autocorrelation of an infrared laser. Um, to perform that uh, measurement, we first uh, took a Michelson interferometer and aligned the system so that uh, the two arm lengths are equal distance. And then we took our uh, my, uh, infrared laser and placed it into the uh, Michelson input. The uh, infrared laser is here. There's a fiber optic that attaches to that laser gain box. Um, then we, the signal comes into our Michelson, is splitted at the beam splitter and reflected back from the mirrors into our photodiode. So um, by shifting the optical path difference in this arm, we're able to shift the pulse train that travels in this direction with respect to this pulse train. Um, by shifting this pulse train by very, very small um, distances and uh, taking intensity measurements at, at each measurement, we were able to um, observe the modulation of the two pulse trains being moved back and forth across each other, um, which can be used to determine the pulse width of our infrared uh, our laser. And here's Adriana with results. So here we are in a room with the lights off, and you are visualizing the output of our Michelson interferometer when the two pulses are aligned near OPD equals zero. The blinking of the light is occurring as I'm moving the optical path length of one of the arms, therefore creating a relative shift in the OPD between the two arms, and that creates um, construction and deconstruction in the electric field of the two pulses, and we can visualize that as a modulation of intensity. Here you see it as blinking of the light. Here we see a noisy signal because our interferometer is very sensitive, but we are able to see a modulation in power from 8 to 30 milliwatts, corresponding to the bright and dark visual spots. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, you saw the fringes in the blinking of the light. Why can you not measure the pulse of the laser? Well, so let me go over what we just saw. So what we saw was the bright and dark fringes that were occupied the entire detector. So you saw it as the blinking light as the um, detector went through the bright fringes and the dark fringes. So I've handily drawn that here on a graph where you can see the bright fringe at the top and dark fringes at the bottom with tau or the time delay between the two arms as the x-axis and intensity as the y-axis. So why can't you measure the pulse width? You have a clear like pulse that you've just measured or have been able to visualize. Well, we can't do that because the interferometer's OPD changing arm cannot meet the resolution requirement to accurately measure the fringes. Ideally, we would have a piezoelectric crystal constantly run through a small enough scale hooked up to an oscilloscope that would measure an envelope like this. Then we could uh, relate the electric field's full width half max to determine the pulse width according to the shape of the graph. There are many shapes the results could look like, but the Gaussian and the Sech are the most common. 